Abbeydale industrial hamlet, Sheffield, a late 18th century steel and scythe works preserved on its original site. This water-powered scythe tilt hammer was used in shaping the scythe. The workmen lived in cottages adjoining the works, a necessary provision in the days before regular public transport. With about five rivers to draw from and the necessary short, relatively steep gradients, water was an obvious source of power and largely determined the site of the works and the growth of the town around them. This single survivor is representative of the once extensive water-powered industry in and around Sheffield. This crucible steel furnace was the means by which sheer steel could be melted and cast into uniform ingots. 77-year-old Mr. Goodwin first needs the clay with his bare feet. Then he has to weigh the exact amount required to make a pot. Now the clay is transferred into a pot-shaped flask. An oiled plug is pressed into the clay to roughly form a pot and pounded with a large maul. After spinning the plug round, it's withdrawn and the shaped pot removed from the flask, formed or dished and set out on a board to dry. Firing came next and while still hot, they were transferred to the furnace to receive their steel-making charge. These are the hammer wheel and the blowing machine used for welding and forging the sides. Basically, the works produced two kinds of scythe, the forged Abbeydale crown scythe and the patent riveted scythe made from rolled steel sheet. 71-year-old Frank Wilkinson making scythe blades. Weights and other details used to be jealously guarded as a form of job insurance. Now one of Britain's major tourist attractions, the Abbeydale Industrial Hamlet demonstrates the early beginnings of the most famous steel tool centre in the world. 